So here is the question. Would it be better to launch a spacecraft into low Earth orbit, low Earth orbit from the equator or from a mountain? Which one's better? Um, let's do it. Let's just calculate that and see what will happen. Um, okay, so a couple of parameters. So here, this is the Earth, and here's some object orbiting the Earth, uh, some altitude h above it. Uh, low Earth orbit uh, is a range, but I'm just going to say this h is 400 kilometers. So let's just think about a launching a spacecraft into low Earth orbit from the surface of the Earth, and it's it's a perfectly spherical flat earth and it's not even rotating okay so so the question is I have this object right here and I want it's at rest and I want to move it up here with some orbital velocity V a height H so I need to go from position 1 to position 2 so how much work does that take well work is the change in energy and we're gonna have a change in kinetic energy plus a change in gravitational potential energy so we can define kinetic energy as one half mv squared, so I need to know how fast it's going. It was going zero right here, uh, and then potential energy uh, for a uh, gravitational object like this, we have to use the real gravitational potential energy, which is negative g mass of the spacecraft, mass of the Earth over r, where r is the distance from the center to that location. So in this case. V1 would be zero. V2 is, I don't know. I don't know how fast it's going. Uh, R1 is going to be the radius of the Earth. I'll just call that R. R2 is going to be R plus H, the altitude. Okay, so <clears throat> let's just calculate all these things. The first thing I need to do, I, I know H. I know everything but V2. So if the... Uh, if the spacecraft is in a circular orbit, then there's only one, one force acting on it, and it is the gravitational force uh, Fg. So the gravitational force looks like this. The magnitude is going to be g m mass of the Earth over r squared. So g, and this is the same g as over here. This is the gravitational constant, and that's the mass of the, <laughs> the object, and that's the mass of the Earth. So uh, and if there is a gravitational force acting on it this way, then it's going to move in a circular orbit. And in a circular orbit, the uh, circular motion, then the object will be accelerating. So I can say this is the only force, and this is going to be equal to ma, where a is the acceleration of an object moving a circle, and that's going to be mv squared over r. So right there, I can solve. I can take this equation and solve for v. So the mass of the object cancels actually, and this cancels to that, and I get v equals the square root of g mass of the Earth over r. So that's how fast it's going to be moving in circular orbit, and so I can now calculate my whole uh, work done. Okay, so let's do that. Okay, so I'm going to write it all out work it's going to be equal to k2 minus k1 plus u2 minus u1 so I already said that this is zero so work is going to be equal to uh, k2 which is one half m v2 is going to be v2 squared is going to be uh, g wait what did it go g m e over r That's v squared. Now I have to do plus this. U2 is going to be uh, negative g m m e over r plus h minus a negative. So it's going to be plus g m m e over r. So that's the work done to get into orbit, and we're going to we're going to calculate that. So this is work one. Okay, now what if I launch from the equator? So I get a benefit from launching from the equator. Uh, I'm still gonna have everything is the same except for this. Now my kinetic energy term is, the initial kinetic energy is not zero. So here's the Earth. 
looking at it from the side. So here's the North Pole, and then here's the South Pole. See, there's poles. I don't know why I t made that tilted. And then here's the equator. So this whole planet is rotating such that if I'm right here launching, then I'm not at a zero velocity. And so if I launch and orbit in the same direction, if I want to launch and orbit in the opposite direction, then you have a problem. But if I want to orbit in the same direction as the rotation of the Earth, then I can use the initial velocity. So what's the initial velocity of this? And in fact, let's do it generically. Let's use this angle. Actually, it's like that, theta. Is that right? No, this is theta. This is the latitude right here. The latitude is the angle above the equator theta. So as I increase theta, what happens actually is I uh, am moving around in a circle, but the size of that circle gets smaller and smaller. So right here at theta equals zero, the size of the circle is the radius of the Earth. Up here at the North Pole, the size of the circle is zero because I'm not rotating at all. So I want to find that V1 velocity. So the first thing I need to know is the angular velocity of the Earth, omega e. It's going to be 2 pi radians divided by the time, 24 times 3,600, which is the number of seconds in a day. And this is wrong. This is, the, this is using a 24-hour day, which the Earth doesn't rotate 24 hours, but I don't want to really get into the difference between sidereal and synodic days right now. This will be good enough. <clears throat> so I know the angular velocity. If I know the angular velocity, I, need, I can find the velocity v equals omega e r, uh, let's call that, what should we call that? v1 equals omega earth times ra. I don't know why I called it that a. R, let's call it r1 for the initial r. And so that initial r is this value right here. It depends on the radius of the earth and the uh, angle theta. So this is the angle theta right there. Or if you want, you could draw this down right here. And so I can see R1 is going to be the radius of the Earth times cosine theta. So now if I put that in up here, I can calculate omega 2. I mean work 2. Work 2 is going to be the same thing. 1 half m g m e over r. Now, minus the initial kinetic energy is going to be minus one-half m, and the velocity is going to be this squared. So that's going to be equal to, I should have wrote it out, let's see, v1 is going to be omega earth, r earth, cosine theta. So it's going to be omega e squared, r squared, cosine squared theta. And then I have that other term up there, uh, minus g m m e times 1 over r plus h minus, I put the minus right there, minus 1 over r. Because that's, a, that's a work 2. And that's from launching at any angle. You can pick whatever angle you want, okay, uh, above the equator. Okay, we got one more. Now what if I will launch from a mountain? And I'm going to launch from a non- a mountain on a non-rotating Earth. Or you could be a mountain on um, at the North Pole. So <clears throat> let's just write what's going to change. Let me draw a picture. The only thing that's going to change is that I have a mountain. I'll put it right there. Uh, so that uh, R1 is not going to be equal to uh, the radius of the Earth. It's going to be equal to R1 is going to be the radius of the Earth plus H, what I want to call this, HE for Mount Everest. I'm, calling, I'm using Mount Everest. Okay, So I'm going to launch uh, not from the surface of the Earth, but I'm going to give myself a little bonus point here. So the uh, height of Mount Everest, I think, is 8,000. I wrote it down. Uh, 850 meters. So what if I start at that height instead of the radius of the Earth? Well, the only thing that's going to change over here, it's going to be exactly like this equation. So let's just write that down. Uh, W3 is going to be 1 half m g mass of the Earth over r, where that r is r plus h. I didn't put that down. That's fine. Uh, minus 
G M M E over R plus H plus G M M E over R plus H E. That's the only difference. Okay, so let's calculate all these things. I don't want to do this with a calculator. I want to do this in Python. And that way also we can change. I want to plot. I want to do three things. I want to calculate W1, which is just the standard. I want to plot W2 as a function of theta. And I want to plot W3 as a function of HE. So we're going to make two graphs. That one doesn't change. Okay, so let's jump over to Python and calculate all this stuff and get it working. Okay, so here I am in GlowScript v Python. I actually got a head start. I put some constants in there because I was going to forget, and I don't like to forget, and I printed out something like that just because I was, wasn't sure. Let's just go ahead and calculate uh, M1. Now, this is the energy. I'm going to calculate the energy to get one kilogram of mass into orbit. So I'm going to say M equals one kilogram. But other than that, I have the gravitational constant G. This is the uh, height of the orbit, 400 kilometers, mass of the Earth, radius of the Earth, the angular velocity of the Earth, omega. Okay, I'm going to just calculate uh, W1. I'm just going to type in my equation. I'm getting my equation right there. It's going to be 0.5 times m times g times me divided by r plus h minus g times m times me times now I'm going to put this as a fraction. Uh, 1 divided by R plus H, R E. Let's just change this to R. That's what I had it called before. R plus H minus 1 over R. And let's print that. Print W1 equals W1 joules. Let's just make sure it's working. Okay, so 3.3 times 10 to the joules. You'll notice that's a lot of energy. That's a lot of energy for one kilogram of mass. Uh, you'll also notice if you, if you print out just the change in kinetic energy versus the change in gravitational potential energy, the change in kinetic energy is like 80% of that energy. So it, it takes a lot of energy to get something into low Earth orbit. Okay, now we're going to plot. Uh, let's just... Uh, calculate W2 to make sure that things are working right and then we can uh, make a graph. So W2, this is going to be the energy from uh, the equator. So I'm going to say uh, theta equals zero and now W2 equals the same thing. But I have an extra term in there. Where did it go? It's going to be equal to uh, right here minus 0.5 times m times omega squared, which I'm calling omega w, omega squared. Let's just do this. Actually, it's times omega times r times cosine theta, all of that squared. And then, then that's everything else is the same for the rest. And let's print that out. Print w2 equals w2 joules. Okay, so it's it's not a lot. You don't save a lot, right? Actually, let's let's see the ratio. Let's see how much we save. So let's uh, say print uh, w. Um, the savings would be one. My, let's just say if I yeah one. So percent savings. Saving equals. It's going to be equal to one minus. W2 divided by W1, right? That's the per, that's how much percent we're going to save, the fraction. I guess I should multiply that by 100. And that will be my energy savings. In in uh, that's, there's no there's no units. So three thirty percent, or is that point three? That's point three percent. I say point three percent savings by going into, uh, for launching from the equator. Um, <clears throat> I don't even know if I need to make this graph. Now let's do W3 is going to be equal to the same thing. Uh, but 
I'm going to say, what did that change? Oh, this is going to be R plus H E, H E. And then let's say uh, print W3, W3 joules. And then let's print savings equals same thing. Uh, it's going to be 100 times 1 minus W3 divided by W1 and there are no units. Okay, so here I say 0.26% uh, by launching from a mountain, 0.3% for launching from the from the earth, from the equator. Now, but here's the thing. You think, oh, that's nothing. Who cares, right? Well, we care a little bit because if you're talking about something that's super expensive, it's super expensive to get even one kilogram of mass into orbit. So any tiny little energy savings can make a, you know, a significant amount. So if you can move down into uh, Florida, uh, Florida is closer to the equator, that's a good place to launch. And you'll notice that what's nice about Florida versus um, uh, San Diego, which is also, you know, closer to the equator, is that if I launch from Florida, I can launch in the same direction that the Earth rotates, uh, which would be east and go over the ocean. So if there's a problem, then I just land in the ocean. Uh, if, I, if I launch west from San Diego, I don't get that rotational benefit because I'm going the wrong direction. I want to go in the same direction as the rotation of the Earth. Uh, and if I do that, then I'm going to go over Texas if there's a problem. So you can indeed do that. But if you want to have a safety zone of the Atlantic Ocean, then you'd launch from Cape Canaveral instead of San Diego. Okay, so there's your calculations of, of launches. And I said I was going to make a graph. I didn't make a graph because I don't think you need it. Uh, and hope you find that useful.